For today's video, I'm sharing some of my spooky ghost stories. These are all events that have happened to me and they're kind of spooky. I don't think they're too scary, but I hope that you will enjoy them. So let's get started. This first story is the man in the hallway. Usually ghost stories happen at night and it can be easily explained away as night terrors or the darkness playing tricks on you. This, however, happened in the middle of the day on kind of a sunny day. I was just emptying the dishwasher, listening to a podcast, and I realized that my phone was nearly out of battery. So I paused the podcast and went in search of my charger. I walked from the kitchen to the hallway and my front door is on the left. As I entered the hallway, I let out a scream because there was a man standing there. Now a few things went through my head. First, I thought, maybe I left my front door open and maybe he was in here by mistake. He seemed a little bit lost. And I half expected someone to suddenly come looking for this very lost old man. My scream actually made him jump and I was about to say sorry to him for screaming and let him know that he just gave me a fright. All of a sudden, he just softly smiled and then disappeared. I think I'd be more scared if I wasn't just so relieved that there wasn't a strange man in my house. I could see him as clear as day, I could recognize him if I saw him again. I swear I even heard him say, ooh, when I screamed, as if he didn't expect me to see him and he was a little surprised. There's been a few things that have happened actually in my hallway, but this wasn't the scariest one. If anything, I feel like this ghost was kind of a friendly ghost who was just a little bit lost and confused. This next story is the man in computer class. This happened to me many years ago. I was late for computer class and my professor was pretty strict. It was all eyes forward, no talking, but I was late. So I wanted to ask my friend, let's call her Amy, who I sat beside, what we were supposed to be doing. So I started logging into my computer as my professor is just walking around the room and I had to wait for her to stop and maybe check someone else's work so that she'd be distracted enough for me to actually turn and talk to Amy. At the corner of my eye, I could see that the professor was standing over someone. Let's call her Samantha. Samantha is seated onto my right side, just a few seats up. So here is my chance to turn to my left and talk to Amy. The coast was clear. So I turned to Amy only to realize the professor was actually on this side and wasn't at Samantha's desk. So I quickly turned back to my computer and started typing and pretending like I knew what was going on. But I could still see someone standing over Samantha on my right hand side. I wondered if maybe there was an issue with her computer, maybe this what I thought was a man, a maintenance man, was here helping her. I even thought maybe we had like a guest professor that was introduced before I'd even arrived to class. I started to glance over in that direction to try and get a better look. It was an older man. He wore a cream woolly jumper and brown slacks and brown shoes and his face was very kind and he just seemed to be watching Samantha's screen, seeing what she was typing. He had this almost proud expression on his face. Just as I blinked, he disappeared and there was nobody standing over Samantha. I remember thinking how I was going to ask Amy who the person was at the top of the classroom. And I'm kind of glad that I didn't because I feel like that would have been really strange. I shook the image off and just tried to get on with the rest of the class. Later that day, I was standing at my locker and I heard Samantha telling one of her friends that an elderly man that she used to visit wasn't well. And she was thinking he was gonna pass and she was kind of waiting to hear whether or not he has passed away. And this gave me chills. Part of me wanted to speak to her, but I didn't know her that well. And I also didn't want to be labeled as like the ghost girl. It just didn't feel very appropriate. Even though the nickname the ghost girl actually isn't that bad. The next day I was late again, but this was a class that was later in the day. I made my way to my seat and I saw that Samantha wasn't even in her seat. And I was kind of relieved because I thought, well, maybe I won't see anything odd today at least. Class started and I was just typing away. And then I noticed a figure again at the corner of my eye. This time he wasn't standing over Samantha's chair and looking at her computer. He was a little bit more out of way. And with Samantha not being in that day, I told myself that it was just a trick of the light. And because it was a slightly later class of the day, maybe the light had changed. And I told myself this was just the corner of my eye, just making up a figure. I decided to very slowly 
turn my head in that direction, trying to keep the figure in view without particularly looking at it. And I also tried not to blink, which actually made my eyes burn. So I'm slowly turning and I again see the same woolly jumper and brown slacks and brown shoes and this figure standing over somebody. And that's when my professor said, Sinead, is there a problem? Because of course I wasn't looking at my screen and I just turned back to my monitor. It wasn't really a question. She was more just correcting me on looking around the room. She then said, Samantha, what did you get for question two? I went to reply that Samantha wasn't in class today. And then I heard Samantha's voice replying. I turned so quickly and I looked over to realize that she had moved to a different computer because her computer had an out of order sign on it. I really can't explain what I saw in those two days. She moved and the figure moved with her. But I later found out that the man had passed away in his sleep on the day that I saw him. I heard one of Samantha's friends comforting her after class and I wondered if my story would comfort her, but I really couldn't bring myself to tell her. Would you wanna know if a ghost was following you? Especially if that ghost was just a really kind old man who just followed you to computer class? This story is called, The Night Wasn't Over Yet. So me and Davey were watching a movie and I had fallen asleep, which is typical of me. And I was lying on the floor and I was laying on a pillow and I could hear the faint sounds of footsteps coming up the hallway. And bear in mind, this is all happening in my dreamy head state. And even as I'm lying on this pillow on the ground, I could almost feel the weight of the heavy footsteps. And it was almost as if the walls became invisible and I could see the shadow of something as it moved towards us moving towards the door to the room that we were in. And everything was in darkness, as if they moved within the darkness. Just as this figure reached for the door, I forced myself to wake up. Everything just felt so real. I was so sure that any second now, someone was going to open up that door. Now, Davey knew that I was having a nightmare because he sees it happen to me all the time. So he just reassured me. He just said, it's just you and me here, my love, you're safe. But I said, no. There's someone out there. Davy got up and he walked towards the living room door that led to the hallway. And I remember as he reached for the door handle, I gasped because I was so scared that someone was going to be on the other side of the door. I was so sure of it. He opened the door and he put the light on and there was nobody there. All the doors and windows were locked and we were safe. As we went to bed, I felt pretty silly for my silly bad dream and I fell asleep quite quickly actually. But the night wasn't over yet. Suddenly, I was woken up by Davy jumping over me to reach for the bedroom door. Now, I always sleep closest to the door. That's just the way that I am. And it's quite a large room. So to get to the door, you'd have to walk all the way around from his side. So the quickest route is to jump over me. I could just hear him shouting, hey, hey. And he grabbed the bedroom door and he opened it and he was looking down the hallway and he looked terrified. So I jumped out of bed and I was trying to comfort him. And I said, you're just dreaming. I probably freaked you out with my dream earlier. Everything's okay. You're fine. Davy grabbed the door and closed closed it because I was now standing right beside it and he was scared of whatever was in the hallway. He said to me, I haven't been asleep. I was watching something on my phone and the door opened and closed and opened and closed again. I moved away from the door and Davy had this very firm grip on that door handle until I moved away. And we really thought somebody was in our house. He went down the hallway and he turned on all the lights and he just kept searching again. It was one thing to dream of something, but he was fully awake and he saw the door slightly open, close, and then slightly open again. And you might say that maybe it was the wind, but the fact that it stayed open, almost as if somebody was peering in, that's what set Davy off. It had never happened before or since. It was a really odd thing to happen. We searched the whole house, but there was nobody there. So we were safe, but the night wasn't over yet. We were just laughing about how crazy everything had been and we were feeling pretty silly about getting so freaked out, but we tried to just go back to sleep. And that's when we heard this huge roar. It sounded half animal, half human. And I lay in bed frozen. I thought maybe it was just all in my mind, like maybe I'd already started dreaming, but then Davy jumped up and he was like, what was that? And at this point, I felt sick. I just burst into tears. He got up and he tried to figure out where the sound was coming from. We did hear our neighbors who were like singing and being really loud, and we kind of convinced ourselves that 
Maybe that's all it was, but the roar completely filled our bedroom. It was so loud. I really couldn't be convinced. We tried to settle back down to sleep, but I just couldn't settle. I felt like a child who was just absolutely terrified. Then every so often, Davey would get up and he would try and comfort me and he would go around the house and he would turn on all the lights and he was like, everything's fine. But I just couldn't shake this feeling like there was something in the hallway. It was honestly like watching a scary movie. I just felt like something was about to happen constantly. I lay there for hours and I waited for the sun to come up and the minute the sun filled the hallway with some light, I suddenly felt just peace and calm. I was finally able to relax and breathe again and then I went back to sleep. It was honestly one of the most terrifying nights. Now me and Davey, we do sometimes share nightmares and night terrors and we see similar figures at similar times, but that night was one of the worst ones. And I'm just so glad that night is finally over. I do have lots of other ghost stories if you want to hear some of those as well, but just remember this is all in good fun and I'm safe and we're safe and just enjoy the spookiness of it all. And as always, my friends, be kind to yourself be kind to others, and I will see you in a video really soon.